Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. What's up? Uh, as well as Chris, aka CGM. Yeah. As well as a longtime supporter of my channel, none other than Colby, aka Colbster. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are y'all he's doing? Also, he, he's also new every time he comes to my stream. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we certainly take appreciate you taking the time out of your night to uh, record this podcast with us. Um, so, so thank you for that. I know it's it's kind of tough, but you, you made the time to do it. And a special thanks to you for being especially patient with us because uh, we were actually supposed to do this like three weeks ago. Um, I took off a week. And then Sarge took off a week, and then we're like, you know what? We're just going to save it for, like, week three. So, thank you. This is three weeks in the making. We appreciate you being oh, yeah, patient man, with us. It's no problem. I'm, I'm proud to be on here anyway. It makes, makes me no difference. Cool, cool. I appreciate that. So, you should be proud. Every time you, t- every time you speak to me, you should be proud. Yes, exactly. I am very proud. Exactly. <laughs> Well, it's hard to. I don't know how Double R uh, speaks with that caterpillar tickling his lip. Okay, for those of you guys who aren't in the loop, I just got through a two-hour stream prior to this podcast, and Chris was giving me a hard time the entire stream because of my choice of facial hair, which at the point right now I have a mustache. Well, it looks like it looks like you're trying to turn into Ron Jeremy. Maybe he is. <laughs> Without the, fact, the sex appeal. The fact that you don't know what a white guy with a mustache is, and that's the only thing related to, it's sad, Chris. It really is. Well, every it, th- every time I see that mustache, I think of Peter Griffin when he grew one, and he was trying to compare it to Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's awful, bro. It's, it's going to get burned off in a fire, and you're going to tape your dog. When lip. you have it long, you look like uh, Ron Jeremy. What is so it? You just shave it off. And go back to baby face. What is it? No, I, I can't. I can't go baby face, dude. I don't like that look. It it's makes better some than good that. Teams, let me tell you, it's better than the. It's better than the caterpillar. You do look like you sit outside of a elementary school parking lot for a while. Oh my god! <laughs> Sitting in his candy van. <laughs> so it is. Uh, at the time that we're recording this, it's Monday, September second. And, um, well, for me on the West Coast, it is. This is, in, in a couple of days here, we're going to have our first actual NFL game, week one. Uh, and starting off with an absolute banger, the Packers at the Chicago Bears. Uh, but obviously, since there are no buys this week, all of our favorite teams play this week as well. I know my team plays at the Dolphins. Um, Colby's team, uh, they host the Giants, right, at 425. That's a win. And uh, Sar- Sarge's team is given the absolute highest honor in playing the, the Patriots week one no, on look. Sunday night football. As um, long as we win week one, that's my Super Bowl, all right? <laughs> hey, I got faith in the Steelers. I think they can do it. And then, of course, there's Chris, who uh, who goes – his Redskins go and play at the Eagles this week. Uh, well, which there's I no believe... chance in the effing hell that they're going to win that damn game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm oh, looking at Chris, the, uh, come on. I'm looking at Jesus the, Christ. I'm looking at the Vegas line right now. The Eagles are heavily favored to win that game. So Philadelphia ain't winning nothing. Don't worry about it, Chris. What would Anthony Stop Armstrong it. say about your faith in your team? Right, exactly. Exactly. He told he, first thing he said is it's good you don't have many expectations. That's the first thing he said, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. I mean he he said keep, keep your expectations realistic. Um, so and, and that's why it's two and fourteen. I guess. I mean, I mean, what the hell are they going to do? You know, I mean, it, they have no offensive line. They have an asshole GM. They have no receivers. They cut Doxson, who sucks, but at least he can do something once in a great while. Is Doxson playing have, for the Vikings now? I don't. Uh, know he is. He I think so. He went to the, yeah, he went to the Vikings. Oh, the team up of Kirk Cousins again. Wonderful. Yes, exactly. That's so exactly what he was. So they have 500 yards against us combined in that game. So, <laughs> so listen, the fact that we have four football heads in here, I think it would be fun uh, or at least interesting to have us go down the list for all the week one lineups and just to 
across the board, see how we're feeling about every game. So with Thursday night football, Packers are at the Chicago Bears. I got to say, and, and we can take whatever order we want to go with this, but I want to say this is the game that breaks the trend of the Bears constantly losing to the Packers. I, I'm taking the Bears at home. I can see the Bears winning. They have, yeah, a, they have yeah. a pretty strong defense. Yep. The Packers haven't really done well in the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Packers really didn't do anything last season, so I mean, I got to take the Bears this time around anyway. All right. Hey, Chris? I think this might be the Aaron Rodgers breakout game. Although it's a new coach, a new system, I think that he's probably going to come out with a pissed off chip on his shoulder because the last couple of years haven't gone so well. And I think he and Mike McCarthy started having some problems. So he's probably kind of happy to have a new coach in there. Right. Uh, so I think, uh, who's the, I who's think, the new coach again? Is that Bruce Arians? I'm, no, it's no. Oh. He's in Tampa. It's uh, Matt LaFleur. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, that I think, I think if the Packers win, it's going to be close, but I'd give them maybe an edge. I mean, I can definitely see the Bears winning, but I think I'm going to go Packers just because Aaron Rodgers. Okay, that's fair. Uh, moving on to the next game, the Rams at the Packers. Uh, sorry, Rams at the Panthers. Uh, I was looking at the recent news reports. It looks like Cam Newton is still day to day with that uh, walking boot he's got on. But they're saying I said the Rams anyway. They're saying that there's a strong possibility he starts Week One. Um, so you're t- so Sarge, you're taking the Rams. I think even though the Rams are away, they're playing away, I think I'm going to take the Rams as well. Yeah, I got to take the Rams too. Can't, I can't bet against them in this one. I'm going to take the Panthers because I think uh, – now, if Cam doesn't play, definitely the Rams, but I think sometimes you lose a Super Bowl, there's a hangover, mm-hmm. and teams have a bad record the next year, and – I don't know if that'll happen with Sean McVay, but I could see them falling back ten and six, eleven and five. Does does the Super Bowl slump really apply though to the loser? It had, uh, dude. A lot of times the Super Bowl loser, like look at the Panthers when they lost to Denver, they were like seven and nine the next year. Yeah, that's well, I mean, true. You, you look at teams like the Bills from the eighties and nineties. They went to the Super Bowl a ton of times. Okay, they, 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 they lost all of them, but. They still had to do pretty well to get there, like four times in a row. Yeah, this well, is true. I'm, just, I'm not saying that the Rams are going to be eight and eight or that bad. I'm just saying I think eleven and five ish is ten and six maybe is where I have them, and uh, I would take the Panthers if Cam is playing. Okay, so you have that stipulation there. Okay, interesting. All right, so uh, next game. Chris, you, I want you to weigh in first with this one because I know it's going to be interesting. Redskins at the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, well, well, shit to bad. Uh, <laughs> Mora Minuski will call his oh my God. soft zone. Uh, the Eagles will probably score 30 to 40, and we'll score 13, and the fans will start calling for Haskins because Keenum will suck. Okay. I think that's he'll fair. He'll throw criticism. a touchdown, but he'll throw he'll throw a touchdown in the pick and have like a seventy, and then the fans will start going Haskins, Haskins, Haskins. But then they don't realize it's better for us to suck. So Snyder will have to fire Ass Clown Allen. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, Jesus sorry. Christ. I've never seen somebody with a worst outlook on their team. Me too, dude. He's such a downer. I mean, it's justified. I mean, I mean at least give him that. Yeah, I mean. You got to give your own team some credit, you know. At least, at least for the first, at least for the first game of the season, you don't know how the other team is built yet. I mean, we I, can't I, get Trent I Williams take... in because we have an a incompetent medical staff and a prick as our GM, and <laughs> Snyder won't fire either. I take the Eagles too, but uh, yeah, if if it was the Steelers playing in a in a tough game in the first season, I'd take the Steelers just like I am this year. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm, optimistic that the Steelers will pull out a win against the Patriots because the Patriots generally in the early part of the season are the easiest to beat. As the season goes along, they progressively get better. So I'm glad we're playing them first. Okay. The last time we played them first in the season, we lost because Josh Scobie can't kick to save his life. 
Yeah, and, we lost Colby, by three points, and he missed three field goals. So you know, this is a this is a bit of a hot take, and I know a lot of people won't agree with me here, but Eagles. Yeah, I'm not going with the damn Redskins. Y'all thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> As the Eagles all day, I'm I'm not taking the Redskins. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Eagles as well uh, in this matchup. <laughs> Uh, next game, this is the definition of a toilet bowl game. The uh, now LaShawn McCoyless uh, Buffalo Bills at the New York Jets with their new acquisition of Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I got to say, I think I'm taking the Jets at home to take this one by a small margin. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I don't, I don't think the Jets are going to win by a landslide because just having Le'Veon Bell, it, it helps out the rest of your team. But they don't have the uh, the offensive line that the Steelers have built up for him, where they could sit and guard people long enough for him to pick a hole to go through. Because that guy takes for fucking ever. Yeah, I remember when when he first started playing for the Steelers, I would watch his games, and he would sit there behind the line. I'm like, "What are you doing? Fucking go!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Your job is to move." But yeah, he yep. did pretty well. I'm going to take the position of who really cares because they, neither team is going to be around in December, but uh, I guess I'll pick the Jets. But they do have Adam Gase as their coach now, so I'm sure he'll find a way to screw it up. Okay. Um, Colby? Yeah, I got to go with the Jets. I think Le'Veon Bell is gonna, he's just going to torture their defense all day. Wow. So now four um, games into the season, we all agree – so we on have the other to... hand, though, yeah. On the other hand, though, if they only game plan around Bell, that's going to leave the receivers open because that that was that's been the Steelers' bread and butter since he's been on the team. Was was they would have to guard Bell like he's running and in coverage. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. He's the X factor of he's the straw that stirs a drink. I mean with any offense and his run style, the way he's patient, doesn't really hit the hole until he finds an opening for sure. Uh, it's an unconventional run style he has, but he's proven it to be you know wildly successful. So he's a problem. He's a problem for any team he's on, no matter how bad the Jets are. You got to you got to be honest if you're playing defense against them. Uh, next game. The Atlanta Falcons against the Vikings. I'm That's taking. A tough one. It, it is really tough because you're taking the um, the Falcons have like the the sixth rated offense, but the 28th ranked defense. Uh, whereas the Vikings are amongst one of the leaders as far as defense in the league. I think for that reason, especially defenses tend to play so well at home. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings in this one. I'll take the uh, Falcons. I'm going to go Falcons, too. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go Vikings here. All right. So me and Colby are on the Vikings. Uh, Chris and Sarge on the Falcons. O- offense wins games. Defense wins championships. Okay. All right, I, I agree with that. Uh, next game is my Baltimore Ravens at the Dolphins. I think it's helpful to mention that uh, we have won the last – three meetings against this team. Uh, so, and I think that'll continue. The Dolphins are in very much of an identity crisis right now, uh, offensively speaking. And uh, they, they just lost, uh, who they lose? They lost Stills and they lost Laramie Tunsil to just a couple. They're going to have a, a, a fantastic 2020 NFL draft. Uh, but for, for week one's sake, they're going to be in trouble. That Ravens defense, that hybrid defense is coming at them. I'm taking the Ravens, playing away to get a win here. I wish I could pick against the Ravens in this one. <laughs> okay. We all do. Just, just because I hate the Ravens. And to be clear, Lamar Jackson is not a quarterback. He's a running back, and that's, that's factual. Do we have to I go agree. through this again? Yes, because it's true. Okay, man just, had more rushing yards than passing yards. Last just, year. Running back. just a side note. Let's let's take a break from the picks real quick. But what would Lamar have to do to, in your eyes, to be viewed as a quarterback? Throw, uh, throw something throw the over the playoff game <laughs> accurately for two games, and then maybe we can start. 
I mean, the only thing he's able to throw is a playoff game, right? Okay. All righty. As it counts as a fumble. All right. So, Chris, who do you have winning this one? Ravens or Dolphins? Right, the Dolphins are the Dolphins are the boil on the dog's ass. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> okay. Plus, plus they're playing but in Miami. But the Reds Miami. can go find a way to lose to them. So the um, Dolphins gonna are going to lose probably pretty bad. I think it's going to be similar to the Week One Bills uh, Ravens matchup last year. Okay. So they're playing in Miami, right? Uh, they are playing in Miami, yes, sir. So they're going to be playing underwater? Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, sh- with that being said, shout out to everyone that's being affected by Hurricane yeah, Dorian. I, uh, I joke, but seriously. <laughs> hopefully everyone's safe. okay. Yeah. Whoever named that, whoever comes up with these hurricane names, they're just awful. Dorian? I mean, I mean who does Well, Chris, it's name? not going on the back of someone's jersey, all right? I mean, just chill out. <laughs> well, it just that be. name. Just what that should name it be? Cringe factor up my spot. DeLorean, in my opinion. What what should the hurricane's name be, Chris? Anything but Dorian. It's just a... So Mabel would be okay? Well, they're both shitty names, but yes, it would be better. My god. Chris is that <laughs> guy that just wants to find one thing to complain about and harp on it. <laughs> Chris is the guy who complains when the grass is the wrong color green. Exactly. Moving on. Uh, next game is... The Jacksonville Jaguars hosting, would you believe it, the number one ranked offense in the league and the 31st ranked defense in the league in the Kansas City Chiefs. They're hosting them. With that said, I'm still taking the Chiefs playing away uh, to get this win in Jacksonville. Well, the Chiefs are going to be an iffy situation, though, because they, the, they don't have, what's his name, uh, the running back. What the hell's his name? Kareem Hunt. There you go. They don't have Hunt anymore. Don't they have Damian Williams? Well, they have LaShawn McCoy now, so. Yeah. Yeah, but he, none of those guys are as good as Hunt, though. It's going to be running back by committee. Uh, both of those guys don't add up to Kareem Hunt. Okay. So are you taking the Jacksonville Jaguars? <laughs> I'm tempted to, yeah. But, I mean. If you have to stamp well, your. your Mahomes, is, Mahomes is the one thing that would make me pick the Chiefs. Okay, so you are taking the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I I take the Chiefs. Okay, Chris. Chiefs. Colby. Jacksonville had an awful Gotta year. The Chiefs. Got to be the Chiefs. Okay, you're all plus, taking the Chiefs. Plus, Blake Bortles is like the most unreliable quarterback in the NFL. That's true. That's true. Uh, that's actually very factual. Uh, I think I think even his uh, career stats back that one up. Wait, when he's when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's awful. Yep. Like really bad. Next game is the Cleveland Browns hosting the Tennessee Titans. Um, say what you want about the Cleveland Browns being amazing and how they've gotten a facelift on, on the franchise and they're playing at home. To me, that's that's impressive because they've, they have been able to add so much. I do think that the Cleveland Browns are going to win this game, but they're going to keep her super close. Isn't they're not going to run away with this victory at all by any means. So I'm taking the Cleveland Wait, Browns. Who are, who are they playing? They're playing. They're hosting the Tennessee Titans. I'm tempted to take the Browns. I'm taking the Browns too. The Browns Browns have been building up their team pretty well over the past two years. Exactly, Chris. Since they got the 0 and 16 season. <laughs> I'm taking the Browns. No, I'm I'm taking the Titans. Are you? Just out of curiosity, why is that? So the Cleveland Browns, I mean, on paper, they're a really good team right now. But I feel like it's gonna take them a little a little bit to develop some chemistry. I feel like the Titans will take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll still Oh, I think we lost you. Colby, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Still there. Okay. Right we didn't lose him. You lost him. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Moving on to the next game. So the, that's, the, that's the end for the 1 p.m. Eastern time games. Here's the late afternoon games, uh, starting off with the Indianapolis Colts, who are now without Andrew Luck, uh, at the Los Angeles Chargers. I think I have no faith. I know they, the, the Colts recently gave um, Jacoby Brissett like $30 million. Um 
which is a stupid well, ass. I, I think it's dumb. I don't think he's earned that money at all. But um, I'm definitely taking the Chargers at home here. This is probably one of my locks of the week. So definitely the Chargers. Yeah, Char- Chargers are going to win that game by a landslide. Yeah, he's, they're yeah. not going to do anything without luck. The Colts are going to be one of the bottom three teams in the uh, AFC with the um, Bills and the Dolphins. You know, and I, I will say still to this day, even though they don't have luck, I will say the Buffalo Bills are still the worst team in the league as it stands right now. Especially since Cole Beasley's on that team. I'll oh, boy. Don't get me started on Cole Beasley. He's so greasily. Anyway. Oh, please not. don't. Please don't. Anyway. Yeah, uh, God, stop. Uh, who, who are you taking, Colby? Not the Colts, I'll tell you that much. Okay. Alrighty, next game is the Cincinnati Bengals at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, the Seahawks, who, by the way, have the number one. A lot of people probably don't know this. They have the number one rushing threat. They're n- rated number one rushing in the league. Um, and you already know <laughs> that that stadium, dude, that, that stadium they play in a century link field, they, they produce earthquakes on a pretty much weekly basis. That's how loud they are. That, that, that stadium is designed to funnel noise. It's going to be extremely hard for the, the A.J. Greenless Cincinnati Bengals to succeed, in my opinion. Joe Mixon's still going to put up a lot of yards on the board, I think. Uh, but I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks at home. I mean, I got to take the Seahawks, too, because I don't like the Bengals, for one. And number two is is the Bengals have been just trash. This is true. I think I think the Bengals lose the AFC North this year. When you, when you say lose the AFC North, do you say, do I see fourth place? Yeah. Okay. I'm picking the uh, Seahawks. Okay. Colby? Yeah, picking the Seahawks. All right, so we're all on the Seahawks. Next game uh, is... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, shout out to Purple Swordfish, friend of the channel, huge Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Uh, They're hosting Jimmy G and his San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Taking a look at the stats real quick here, uh, it would appear that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are number one rated in the league as far as total passing yards per game. And offensively you know rushing passing offensively as a whole they're third in the league i i think that's tremendously uh astounding i, no, I can't believe it, it they they're number one passing in the league believe it or not but uh i'm gonna go ahead and take the tampa bay buccaneers at home this is another who cares game to me but uh, I think Bruce Arians will turn the Bucks around. I don't think it'll be overnight, but uh, God, the 49ers are just a shitty organization. So I'm going to pick the Bucks. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to take the Bucks. You can take the Bucks, okay? And Colby, yeah. I'm going to take the Bucks here. All right, we are all on the Bucks. I got a feeling uh, Colby's going to be swayed one way, a uh, certain direction on this next game, but. Uh, it's going to be the 425 late afternoon kickoff, the New York Giants at the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. Um, Cow pies. I don't think there's any any uh, confusion here. I think... Yeah, uh, team takes it easily. I think Dallas takes this one. Yeah, pretty handedly too. Uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking Dallas at home. Mickey P is going to slice up that secondary, man. I don't think Dacky P is going to have that much to do with it. Right. <laughs> Without Elliot, Dacky P is nothing. Exactly. Uh, absolutely what I was going to so, say. So, speaking of that, uh, since we've all kind of established we're all in the Dallas Cowboys this week, speaking of Ezekiel, Colby, since you're the, the Cowboy fan here, uh, do you have any kind of information as far as, like, is Ezekiel Elliott good to start week one? Uh, yesterday I could I could say he was, but today I've heard that the deal stalled and whatever so i don't i don't know i don't know anymore okay so as far as you know it could be pollard that's going to be taking the snaps week one right Ooh. Yeah, tony pollard and alfred morris in that backfield it may not be so bad but i don't know i think alfred morris left his best years in washington if i'm completely honest but yeah, okay right. 
that ought to be interesting. Uh, the last of the late afternoon games is going to be the Detroit Lions at the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not sold on the on the Cardinals' new quarterback, um, Murray. Uh, I, I just I, I see him play, and I don't know if it's rookie jitters or or what it is, but he just he doesn't look like he's comfortable back there playing quarterback. Um, and we know the you know what the Lions are about already. You know they're they're monsters, and I think they're going to give the Bears a solid run for the uh, NFC North this year, as well as the Packers. Um, but I gotta say, I'm thinking maybe because of his uh, his tutelage and you know his just just the way he's been playing in preseason so far, I think he'll keep that up. And I got the Cardinals winning this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think the Lions just are more they're not great I think man, Patricia was a bad hire uh, but I think they're a little more polished team yeah I don't think Patricia was a bad hire I think that he had nothing to work with and I'm still taking the Lions though well I'm not to interrupt but I've heard even already that players aren't happy with him and he could lose the team pretty quickly kind of like uh um Macadoodle do and uh, Macadoodle. Giants. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about, about that you have to understand about Macadoodle do is that you don't go into a press conference and blame a loss on your quarterback who's won two Super Bowls with that team. Exactly. Oh, yeah, he threw him under the bus. Yeah, that was dirty. But he lost that team within his second year. So. I I think Patricia could do the same. Is all I'm saying. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Colby, are you going Lions or Cardinals in this one? If I could do a dice roll, I would, but I just go to Lions. Okay, fair enough. All right, so that's the end of the late afternoon games. Sunday night football: Steelers at Patriots, Week One. Pinch me if 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 I'm dreaming, but I feel like I've heard this one before. And in fact, I remember the. 2015 was it 2015 where the 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 Steelers opened up against the Patriots and they scored like 35 to seven and Scobie couldn't make a kick. Um, no, it wasn't 35 to seven. What was, was the score? We, the Steelers lost by three. I don't remember what the score was, and Scobie missed three field goals. Yeah, he was playing when I said, superbly this bad. This dude needs to go. He was playing. Why did our Why did our kicker have to hurt himself in a game that doesn't matter? <laughs> He, he was playing superbly awful. Um, oh, you're I not going to so, like this. I was, I was very upset when uh, when I found out that uh, Sweezum had injured himself out of his career in a yeah. Hall of Fame game. Yep, exactly. In a game that doesn't even matter. Yep. Um, you're not going to like to hear this, but I have to go with the New England Patriots. Of um, course you do, because you're you're going to go with whatever team's popular. No, it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with popular. It's just that <laughs> I, I, I have it, more faith in the Patriots at home, opening up at home, especially on Sunday night football, bro. I'm, I'm taking the Patriots. Sarge? It's okay. You're entitled to be wrong. <laughs> okay, so you're clearly taking the Steelers. That's fine. Oh, I'm taking the Steelers for sure. Okay. Uh, because if, if I think if they're going to beat the Patriots, it's going to be early in the season. Now, why do you say that? Why? What? What, what difference does it make when it is? Because the Patriots typically have a slow burn. They start off kind of iffy, but then by like week three, week four, week five, somewhere around there, they start turning it on, and then they're just un- unfucking stoppable. <laughs> okay. I mean, pretty much. That's right. typically the way it works, right? I mean, I'm not making shit up. That's just no, how they right. do. You're right. That team is definitely built to last for sure the entire length of the season. Um, Chris, what do you think? I'm going to go probably Patriots, but I I think the Steelers will hang in there. So you're thinking it's going to be a close game, but you're taking the Patriots? Probably, yeah. Okay. And Colby? Yeah, like 
like Chris said, I think it'll be a really good game. It'll be close, but I got to give the Patriots the edge. Okay. Sorry, Sarge. It's three on one. That's okay. And uh, You're this week, to be wrong. this is one of the few weeks in the NFL season, now that I'm looking at it, that we are blessed to have two back to back Monday night football games. Uh, the first one is going to be a 7 10 p.m. Eastern time kickoff between the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are hosting that game. And, um, I, you know, the, the the Texans really lost a major key to their team recently. And, of course, we're talking about Jadavion Clowney. Um, I think that's going to hurt them this game if they don't get pressure on Drew Brees, who already is protected handsomely by his offensive line. I'm going to go ahead and say New, New Orleans Saints are going to win this game. Yeah, I got to agree with you, the Saints. I think the Saints should have been in the Super Bowl last year. I'm sure a million people agree with me. They but... got cheated. Yeah. Cole doesn't care. But... Okay, so you're taking the Saints. Chris? Yep. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Saints, too. Colby? Yep, got to go Saints. All right, so we're all on the Saints. Uh, and then the next game here is uh, kind of a late one. I don't know a lot of people on the East Coast that are going to be up for this one, but this one has a start time, believe it or not, of 10.20 p.m. Eastern time. Um, that's usually when much of the nation goes to sleep. But it's going to be the Raiders hosting the Denver Broncos. I'm going to say the Broncos win this one just because they have Joe Flacco as quarterback. I'm going to say the Broncos lose that one because they have Joe Flacco as quarterback. <laughs> It can go both ways, and that's the way I'm taking it. Okay. All right. Chris? I think this is another two teams that are going to be six to eight wins, probably under. Uh, But I guess I'll go with the Raiders because I think they're a little less crappy. Is it because you've been watching the NFL Hard Knocks? No, I just think the Broncos are going to be pretty bad. I just. I got to say, I've been watching NFL Hard Knocks, and John Gruden is extremely hilarious when he's not in the commentator booth. Colby, what do you think about this game? Broncos at Raiders. I think I got the Broncos in this one. Do you? And what is your reasoning? Just out of curiosity. I think, I don't, I think Joe Flacco can have a good game. I think. Offense, I like Corlin Sutton. I still have Jake Butt <laughs> that I know. Um, mm-hmm. Weapons on that team. Defensively, they're, they're decent, but, I mean, they're not great, but they're the Raiders. You don't need that much. Um, and I think they'll just barely take it, but I think they'll take it. Okay. So there you have it. That's our picks for week one of NFL football. Go um, Steelers. I think for the most part, we were all kind of on the same accord. We only agreed on just a few. Or we only disagreed on a few games. Um, but that's that's week one. Hopefully, wherever you're at, you're able to watch your favorite team. I know for me, because I will be in Chicago this week, um, I don't know what games are going to be on TV. Uh, and I don't have the luxury that I will have in Chicago. Here in Vegas, if I don't get the game on broadcast TV, I head out to a local casino and watch it there but just go to a bar yeah it's always on at the bar yeah so what else what else is new in your life guys um outside of football being back officially effective this thursday what else is new nationals got their ass kicked today nobody cares nobody cares about that thing that you call a sport Colby, is baseball a sport? No, uh, no comment. <laughs> oh, you have to have a stance on this. You got to have an opinion. I just... <laughs> oh, I... Boom! It helps put me to sleep at night, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to down it. And just, just like it's that... Tele- it's cr- televised NyQuil. <laughs> it's televised NyQuil. There you go. <laughs> you just don't understand the nuances of the game. It's go on, Chris. Definitely not a sport. That's it, true. It is a sport, and if you don't, you just don't understand because there's very exciting plays in. 
<laughs> I totally called it. <laughs> totally. You don't understand the nuances. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> I think, I think Chris gets a, a bad rap. I really do. I think he gets the rap he needs. <laughs> oh. So, just out of curiosity, I think we've asked every other person except um, except a couple people. Um, how is it that you discovered the channel at first, Colby? You know, I I think you know him, and I'm pretty sure you do. Uber YouTuber. Okay, yeah. Um, Former Madden streamer, uh, he's on uh, D Live now, doing basically everything. But you know, he did a raid just like you do. Channel okay. checked you out there, and you know that's why and, I'm uh, and you're, sponsored and stuff now. And you're like, this content is trash. I'm definitely subscribing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, 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 you're. Let's just say your Madden's about on par with the uh, Dolphins. <laughs> okay, wait a minute here. I'm win, I win games, Chris. Yeah, when you, you when you cheese with Lamar yeah. and run, okay, hundred Listen, it. there are ways to stop Lamar Jackson in Madden. The fact that you you harp on me abusing his running ability is a shame you because do? you just admitted you did. He, you just admitted listen, you did. Self admission. I, I relish <laughs> I relish the fact that I do. But people have to stop it. I'll give you that, yes. But the reason you run with him is because his throwing is so crap that when you throw, you throw a pick, and you're like, damn it! I don't think that's fair to say. He can throw I five. Think, I think it's pretty close. Blind I mean, fool. Or at least he <laughs> <swear> he does. <laughs> and then, I mean, and Stevie then you Wonder grunk has spike a your, You rating. grunk spike your controller, and then... And then you're like, oh, my controller's disconnected. I guess the stream's <laughs> over. And then we go through, like, this little uh, temperature. I don't think that's fair to say. But oh, again, no, no, you, are, you do keep your head pretty cool, I will say. I'm exaggerating. Yeah. You have been known to grunk spike your controller. You know, it's... I, I try to keep a level head, especially when I'm streaming, because it's just not me to destroy my own property like that. Um, speaking of Ex keeping... Except when it is. Yeah. Yeah. And... You do not spike your controller, but for the most part, you keep a level head. Exactly. Um, what do you guys make of... I, I, and I know from myself and Chris, we, we are both uh, consumers of fast food. I can't speak on Sarge or Colby's behalf, but either way... What do you guys make of this new trend or fad or even derangement over this new Popeye's uh, sandwich to the point where people are waiting hours? Oh, so I'll chime in on that. Yeah, yeah, please do, because I saw the picture you posted on Twitter today of you waiting I, at Popeye's. I was at Popeye's today, <laughs> and, and here's what, I, you know, they want me to buy the three-piece meal for 11 bucks and they have four tenders and a biscuit you know i don't need two starches right i don't need a biscuit and fries four tenders and a biscuit were 3.99 and i got a drink for a dollar 99 and i asked the girl i'm like um because i had to wait 15 minutes for my four damn tenders i was about to go <laughs> gordon ramsay on their ass <laughs> where the fuck are the four tenders uh, but anyways, I can see Chris I yelling at some there. poor high school kid that's got a summer job. <laughs> He's gonna jump over the bar. And they were that's all in their twenties. Special sauce in your They order. were all at least. In their <laughs> oh but my anyways, god! I asked if they're bringing back the uh, chicken sandwich, and her response was, "It won't be back until at least the end of October." Was a corporate decision. Whoa. So, Chick Fil A, here I come. Oh, I gotta the say. only time I ever want Chick Fil A is on Sunday, closed. And they're closed, yeah. I so, like Chick Fil A. If you get their spicy deluxe sandwich, I mean that's good the shit with the waffle fries. That's a good one. Spicy Kobe, deluxe. Kobe, do you do you consume fast food? Oh, you're dang right, I do. So what Just is your Popeyes or? Okay, yeah, I've never. I told Chris today, I'm, I've never really been a Popeyes guy. I've always found their service to be subpar. Um. 
Uh, Sarge, do you consume fast food? Uh, no. FBI agents expect it's, it's too it's right too right expensive right. for me to consume fast food now. You know you know how much a trip to McDonald's cost me now with my kids. Oh, with your kids? Okay, I was about to say twenty five bucks, right? <laughs> Thirty dollar minimum. Yeah, I believe it. You could go to thirty dollars for a bad hamburger. You could go out to a sit down for close like thirty five, forty. Yeah. Or if I'm dining with Chris, he could cover the whole tab. <laughs> yeah, when you oh, were to pour me out here we $200 go. <laughs> for your, your fat ass to shove a sushi down your throat. So, so here's the thing. If you guys aren't in the loop with this, it's a, it's a meme on the uh, on the streams, but it's, it's going to come to fruition soon. Um, I have a bunch. What it comes down to is I have a bunch of uh, vacation hours at my job, and it's to the point where I'm almost maxed out, so I have to take a vacation, right? So... I told Chris, all right, I'm going to fly out 1,700 miles to see you out in Virginia or D.C. or whatever bumble town you live in, and we're going to go out to get sushi, and you're covering the tab. You 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 will be paying for the tab, and I think that's no, fair. But, no, but you're not asking, you're, and that's fine if you eat a reasonable portion, but you're like, well, I'm going to order 12 rolls of sushi, and it costs $15, and then I'm going to order a uh, uh, extra two drinks and then I'm going to order dessert and then I'm going to tell you who the hell are you going to tell me what the hell I'm going to tell you here's the thing though I mean, when here's you what have, you got to understand about Chris here's what you have to understand about Chris I'm flying out to see you bro you can't cover a meal I can cover a reasonable meal yes not, not a $300 meal what the hell am I am I Okay. Am I Donald Trump where I'm a billionaire? No, I'm not. Okay, here's the thing. You're making your six-figure FBI salary. It's not six-figure, but here's the I, thing. And um, I'm making half that. But it is an FBI salary. <sighs> here's the thing. And, and one that. of my requests for Chris was to kind of like sh- show that he has a compassionate side to him uh, and prove the haters wrong. And the way he would do that is at the end of the meal. Well, I have plenty of compassion. I put at, all the. <laughs> I emptied my wallet in the fill to boot today for the firefighters and EMTs. So I don't so, need to define my compassion. <laughs> I have plenty of compassion. I donate to the fire people today. So, so, so what I was suggesting <laughs> is for him to go beyond. I gave a dollar. I, I gave I, a hoot. I expect. I, I, I had five <laughs> bucks in my wallet. Thank you. I was having. <laughs> Chris potentially go beyond the recommended 14% tip on the bill and kind of leave a larger tip for the waitress. And he was yeah, not... Yeah, so when it's $200, I'm going to leave $40 fucking dollars <laughs> tip because you want to you wanna stuff your fat ass face. Oh my god. Now you have an ass face. What do you think about that? Oh my goodness, dude. Oh damn. I can't with Chris sometimes. But... <laughs> Realistically, with a caterpillar on it. Okay, he, he's gonna go back to making fun of my mustache. <laughs> really funny. It's a mustache. I thought it was a muskrat. Oh god, I don't like you guys. It's some sort of rodent. <laughs> we don't know what it is yet. Dude, it's awful. Uh, we're, I'll even, get rid of it. All right. Even Science Jess still hasn't it, figured out what kind of animal it is. Did you see her today? Jess is like, get rid of that. It's awful. Yeah, even Jess thought it was hideous. Well, there's some there's people who just you don't they, value male opinion at least. Here's you value the thing. Female. Here's the oh, thing. What you gotta, <laughs> what you gotta understand way, about a mustache is you can't say, "Hey, do you want to go for everyone, a mustache ride?" If you don't have a mustache, not everyone is interested in beards. Same thing. Not everyone is interested in, in facial hair at all. So it's like you can't. Well, dude, you can't when every single everybody. person on your stream is mocking it, and you have females. And like that girl on Hinge didn't respond to you. Oh, by the way, you'd be pleased to know I ate 96 pieces of sushi and had room for dessert. I guarantee you she didn't respond. Okay. I think there's a little bit of a reason for that. And she didn't respond or you would be shutting me down now. I get it. I'll tell you what. I'll think about it. That's the best I'll do. That's the best I can do is to think about it. Jeez. Oh, well, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. It. But don't shave it half off or you'll look like Hitler again. Hitler didn't have. Okay. 
No, I said when you had the half mustache last time, you looked like Hitler. When did I have a half mustache? That awful mustache after that haircut looked like Hitler. I don't know, but it's a good thing you'll never get drunk around me. I'd cut half of it off. <laughs> like, I'd cut off half your mustache, one of your eyebrows. Oh, God. Half your head. So, Chris, as soon as you can uh, um, confirm that you are going to be paying for all of my meals during my stay in D.C. or whatever Virginia Bumbleton town <clears> you live in, um, I will go ahead and book the trip. All right? Hey, look, at least he deems you important enough to come visit. Exactly. Exactly. He's never. He's never going to come out to North Carolina to visit me. Well, we we I'm have not to. That important. We have to figure. No, we we're we're definitely going to have to figure something <laughs> out. Um, it helps that you guys are both on the East Coast, but it doesn't help that you guys are. I'm literally like hours, six hours away. From hours Paris. away. Exactly. So. Well, um, I told you what to do. Come here and rent a car and drive down there. I'm not driving hours. I, I'm <clears> fly, <throat> dude. I, I don't feel like driving. I'm sorry, not all of us you are made drive, of money, and we can go fly to, wherever we want. And forth yeah. all the time to, to catch terrorists. Big spender here. Canyon. I don't drive, and, I fly. I have my own personal helicopter to take me everywhere <laughs> I want to go. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this podcast. Huge thanks again for uh, Colby being super, super patient with us. Um, thank you so much, yeah, no man. It's, uh, appreciate you for being on the channel. We are absolutely going to have you back. Uh, appreciate you for everything you nope, do moderating fired. on the channel as well. Uh, but for that, that reason, we're going to have to <laughs> cut you loose. I'm just going to. Oh, he does not. And... He does not give a shit. He will time you out or ban you. In a oh, second. Colby, like he, he's such a good mod that someone would say something offensive in between, like me looking at the stream and looking at my game. And by the time I look <laughs> at the chat, the comments already gone, and he's just sitting there with a smug smile, like, "Okay, good job." <laughs> and... And the person will be Attack. hidden. And the person will be hidden on the channel. Yeah, exactly. I like when the people that come in with like the troll names, like uh, like anonymous or whatever, or like like racial slurs, but in like phonetically, yes, not spelled that way, but phonetically, if you pronounce it, it would oh, be yeah. a racial slur. Uh, so. Uh, and then they're like, hey, can you give me a shout out? And that shit. I hate that so much. When they try to bait you into saying something racial. And then they, all, and they're they looking for, all they're looking for is a sound bite. Exactly. They're trying to yeah, get you to say something and then they're going to post that sound bite. And that's how the whole cancel culture is, is, has come about now. They wait for you to say then, something bad. And then, and then here we go. They run a campaign to try to cancel you. And then the uh, agency would find out. No, because uh, I would have to. I'd had to. I've had the whole stream. If anyone said anything, you can't risk your position, man. The agent. The agency would uh, find out. Chris, shut up clip. about the agency. <laughs> Chris They're is... already made. Well, and they at minimum put you in mandatory sensitivity training, like they are with the mandatory gym time. um just to give you guys a heads up um and this is not this is something chris has been asking for for a while um we knocked it out the park with having a former nfl player um on the podcast not to say that colby's chopped liver or anything we appreciate him but i'm in the works with getting a potential Chris, you're going to love this. I was going to save this for his podcast, but I'm in the works for getting a potential FBI investig- oh, uh, um, yes. interrogator on, oh, on the podcast. Awesome. It's his partner, oh, your co-worker. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to see how Double R performs at his job. Okay, here we go. Is he going to give crime. you a peer review on the... On the... <laughs> I think Chris has a lot of questions. I think Chris has got I a lot do. of questions. Oh, so. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, <laughs> How did you guys find John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> when you look at when you, when the person's eyes go to uh, pinpoints, do you know you have that caught? <laughs> this is going to be amazing. I can't more, wait for this. More to come on future <laughs> podcasts. How many times have you walked into somebody's house and had somebody else walk in, and then you tell them, "Take a seat." 
<laughs> Take a seat. I'm Chris Hansen. Uh, <laughs> you're chasing the cat around wearing a towel. Well, oh, speaking of Chris Hansen, hand. did you uh, did you did you hear that he's like he's a YouTuber now? Uh, he's no, he, he's uh, copyright striking people. They're using clips from his his shows. Yep. Yeah, oh, that sucks. Man. Yeah, yeah that does suck. He's a YouTuber. Yeah, he wants he's it had, on his own channel. That's why. Oh, he's a, he's way, had a few channels is. taken down. It's kind of it's pretty. I wouldn't do this personally, but there's a new site called Cameo. And you can, like, get a shout-out to yourself for, like, a friend for, like, their birthday and anniversary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, from a celebrity. And each celebrity has their own price point. And uh, he, he's on Cameo <laughs> in uh, every video he does. Because unless you you can opt out from having your video shown, but if you don't, they post it on the site. And every video he does, he's like, I need you to take a seat. <laughs> because it's your because John and Trish want to wish you a happy birthday that's hilarious <laughs> that, that's I, I, I awful. love Chris Hansen <laughs> I love him he's, he's, he's amazing <laughs> so until next time guys appreciate you for listening to this podcast this is going to be me Sarge Chris and Colby checking on out we will catch you next time God bless everyone and go Steelers Go Ravens. Steelers.